morning, God. It's a special day. If you were here visiting with us, we just want to honor you in so many ways. You know, the Bible says something like this. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. See, I want to be in the house of the Lord because I can find the word in the house of the Lord. You know why? Because my deliverance is in the word. My healing is in the word. My direction is in the word. Let me tell you something. The answer to that problem, child, is in the word. The answers to that marital issue you got going on is in the word. Psalms 119 and 105 says, Thy word, the word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Not only does the word give me proper direction, but it gives me confidence in the direction I am going because sometimes you don't, you don't even realize, am I doing what God called me to do? Am I going in the direction he called me to do? But I can find, amen, uh, uh, a, a peace when I read the word. And although I may not know every step, I know I got confidence in the steps that I take. I just want to give you, I'm not in my message yet, but I just want to give you the purpose of Scripture. The purpose of Scripture. Write this down if you're taking notes. And we're going to have this on the big screen, I think, so you can just take a picture. They're going to put it up there, Okay. Now, this is interesting because you need to know this. The purpose of Scripture. I want to give you four things just real quick, okay? Number one is for doctrine. Okay, for do meaning, get this now, what is right? Number two is for reproof. What is not right? Number three is for correction. How to get it right. And number four is for instructions in righteousness, how to stay right. And that is the purpose of Scripture. And when you read your word, become familiar with the word of God, and the word abiding you, as it abides in God, then God says, you can ask whatever so you want, and he shall give it unto you. So what is right, what is not right, how to get it right, and how to stay right. So, saints of God, you must build yourself up in the word of God because whatever is coming against you, whatever is coming against your family, whatever is coming against the promises of God, the answer is in the word. The Bible says the flower fades, the grass withers, but the word will stand forever. Let us all stand to our feet. I only got one scripture I want to preach from this morning. Typically, I got a whole storyline, but... I only got one scripture, and what a powerful scripture it is, and it's found in the book of St. John, St. John chapter 15, verse 16, St. John 15, 16. I will say I'll give you time to find it, but in this instant age of technology, you already found it <laughs> already. I know you have. <laughs> since, I, since we don't carry Bibles like we used to, the church... And everything is, you know, is on the phones and tablets. So I can't hear nothing moving to let me know you're there. So I have to ask you, are you there yet? Yes. All right. Okay. Read that for us this morning. St. John 15, verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. I want to minister from this title this morning, You Are Chosen. Amen. You are not a mistake. Amen. You are not just anybody. You are chosen. You may have your seats here this morning. For every problem, that's in your life. God has a plan for it. Whatever problem you may have in your life has not caught God by surprise. The enemy does not want you to be strategically placed, okay? He don't want you to be strategically placed because he don't want you to be effective. Because when you're in the right place at the right time, then God can give you what you need for the season that you're in. You're not always going to be in the season that you're in right now. It will change. 
but God will give you what you need in the season so that you won't be so filled with anxiety trying to figure out what's going to happen next year in five and ten years. No, he was to give you peace where you're at right now. When we begin to seek wisdom, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Not fear in the sense of terror or fright, but in the sense of reverence and respect. We need to respect God. We do not use his name in vain. We just don't substitute his name and put it on a lower category as if he's just another person. We need to be like the Hebrew people when it comes down to God. They don't even say it. And when they write it, they remove the vowel so you can't say it. Because they have such a high respect for God. But we are in the dispensation of grace. And because there is no immediate judgment on our lives, because we're in a season of grace, then we just get away with a lot of stuff. And we say things. And, and we have to come to church to be taught and retaught that when, you, that when you deal with God, understand he is the creator. Oh, you don't hear me. He is Elohim. We need to reverence God. That's faith one-on-one right there. Respect God. Reverence God. When I come into God's house, it's not my house. I don't treat him the way I treat my own house. I got to bring myself higher. I don't say things out of order in God's house. I don't say, oops, excuse me. No, this is God's house. I don't cuss on the ground of God's house. Well, I'm in the parking lot, God's property. Whether you park where you want to park or not, you should have got here earlier. Could have got prime parking space right up to the building. No, you were late. <laughs> so sometimes you know I'm wrong. Yeah, I got, if I got to park well over here, so be it. I just think I'm in the house. I just, I'm thinking I'm just in the number. <laughs> Elohim means strength and power. He is supreme. He's the mighty one. He is the creator of the heavens and earth. He said, I created you. You are in my likeness, meaning you are creative just like me. Speak a thing, and I will make sure what you speak come into existence because you're spoken in faith. I understand when you speak things carelessly, but I also understand when you need something and, and you're putting your words to war, I'm going to come in agreement with what you're saying. I'm going to send my holy angels to catch the word to make sure that the devil don't steal it so that can come to pass in your life. He said, you are creative. Matter of fact, he says, you know, you are uniquely creative. And then he said, I'm going to separate you from everything I have created on earth. You will not be like them. He says, you are, you, you're going to have the unique ability to be creative because I am creative. Think about just 125 years ago, how much has changed in the whole history of the world. In the last 20, 125 years, we have outpaced all of time. Because the Bible said in the last days, he said he gonna speed up time. And now we see we in the last days. Look at the technology that we have today. Just 125 years ago, we did not have the automobile. We didn't have airplanes. We, we, didn't, we, didn't, we couldn't even harness electricity. See, that sounds strange to us that people didn't have lights. They had candles and lamps. That's 125 years ago. We didn't have no microwave. There was no TV. There was no air condition. As I was coming to, to, to church today, you know, I hit the air conditioner. I'm like, thank God for air, you know. Uh, you know but, but guess what? When, when you don't have that, you don't think about that. See, I grew up in a church that didn't have no AC. They had to open up the windows and waltz be flying up in that J. You'd be all up there trying to praise the Lord and waltz be all over the place. 
So you know what I'm talking about, sweating. I mean, you just profusely sweating, but guess what? We still had a good time. Now we got all the convenience and we don't even want to come. <laughs> 125 years ago, we didn't have no smartphone. AI did not exist. Who knows what's going to be invented in the next five years? Woo. If you put man anywhere, he will be creative because he's going to be just like the God that created him. He said, let us make man in our own image and our own likeness. The Bible says in Genesis 1, 1 through 4, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved on the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And whenever God says something is going to happen, I don't care what you do. You can be a Jonah and say, I ain't going to do it. And I ain't going. But God says, when the, I get the last word. And whether you go uh, the way I told you to go or the way you're going to do your own thing, you're going to get the Nineveh. And God saw the light and said it was good. So before there was a choir, before there was an organ to play, before there was a tambourine to beat, before there was a praise team or praise dancer, before there was anybody, amen, uh, to praise God, God said, I'm going to praise myself all by myself. He is the mighty one who stepped out on nothing and said, let there be something, and it became what he said it will become because God is sovereign. He totally reigns, not partially reigns. He knows exactly what's going on around the world. He's in total control. He's all-powerful. He's in all places at all times. He's all-knowing. He's not guessing. He's not wondering. He's not figuring out. God already knows the beginning from the end. He knows the answer before the question. He knows the sum total before the equation. He knows your thoughts. A matter of fact, he said, I know your thoughts while they still are far off. I know what you're going to do before you do it. God said, I know before you was formed in your mother's belly, I knew you. I chose you. I ordained you. I sanctified you. Lord, when did you sanctify me? When I got my life cleaned up? No. When, oh, you don't hear what I'm talking about. When I got baptized? No. When I gave my first offering? No. God said, I sanctify you before I even formed you. I secured you. I protected you in the womb. You couldn't have been a stillborn. I had my hand on you. I sanctified you. Before you had your first heartbeat, I sanctified you. Oh, before they determined your gender, I sanctified you. Sanctified means you are set apart. God said, I did not want you to be in the club, and I didn't want you to be in the clique. I wanted you to be different. I set you apart. You were meant to be an outcast to men so you could be an in-cast to me. You are on a mission. You are sent from God. You were sent from eternity into time for a designated purpose. God has a definite agenda for your life. You are distinctly different from anybody else. Your fingerprints are different from anybody else on the whole entire earth. A matter of fact, you are forbidden to imitate people. Who told you to imitate that person? You are forbidden to imitate other people. Stop stressing yourself out trying to be other people. God wants you. Yeah. Look at somebody say, I'm chosen. I, I'm chosen. Let me, tell you how, how, let me tell you how chosen you are. He says, even the hands on your head are numbered. He didn't use the word counted. 
He said number, meaning when you comb your hair, when you brush your beard, whatever hair gets caught in the comb, he said that was 19,231 hair right there. He didn't say count it, he said numbered. You are set apart. You are awesome to God. Wow. He said, you are the apple of my eye. Out of everything I created, I created you to think like me, act like me. Amen. There's no other creature that's like you. God is powerful. He sits on the circle of the earth. Nobody elected him. Nobody can impeach him. He's God by himself. When John began to teach, amen, about God, he said it like this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and he was with God in the beginning. Through all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has not been made. So we understand our God is intelligent. He's not just powerful for electricity. It's powerful, but electricity has no sense. He is forceful. You don't hear me, amen? And the wind is forceful, but the wind has no sense. He is strategic. He's a thinking God. He has a plan. He has a purpose. He has wisdom. Our God is strategic. I want, I want you to hear John 1 and 1 in a different way. I just read it, but I want to hear it in this way here because he is strategic now. In the beginning was the strategy. And the strategy was with God. And the strategy of God, all things was made by the strategy. And without the strategy, nothing was made. Now, I wish y'all could get excited like me. Maybe you ate too many steaks and eggs this morning. Maybe you went to IHOP for Mother's Day. Maybe you're a little lethargic right now. But I need to get somebody wound up. That's the kind of God that I serve. He is a strategic God. He don't place me just anywhere. He placed me strategic. There are people I got to meet, duties I got to accomplish. He said, I'm going to place you there. No, I didn't have you born in 1865. I had you born in this process. You couldn't handle 1865. So I had you born in this time to do a work for me. You are called out. You are separated. You are chosen. Your God is strategic. <laughs> he created everything in the book of Genesis down to the beast of the field, to the fish in the water, to the birds in the air, from the vegetation that grows out of the ground. The only thing he said, I want you to do, be like me. The one thing about every living thing Everything that God created, the one thing all of them have in common, he says, is that its seed is within itself. So he created everything living to self-perpetuate. Why? So that he would not have to get up off his throne and create it again. He said, I'm going to do this one time, and every time thereafter, you will perpetuate your own existence by your own intrinsic discovery of what I have hidden down inside of you. And God, I have placed treasure down inside of the depths of your being. Down in the depths, you have, you, you have a seed so you can continue to do what's already down inside of you. Now watch this. In Genesis 8, 22, while the earth remaineth, there will be cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, and seed time and harvest time, and it shall not cease. So seed time and harvest are the strategy of God. That's why you're still here. 
Because God has a strategy for your life. Because when the enemy thought he had you surrounded and wanted to destroy you, God stepped in and said, no, I got a strategy for that one right there. When the enemy meant for evil, God said, no, 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 I'm going to turn that around and make that for good. Devil, you thought you had him, but I'm going to make that hurt, that pain, amen, turn out for the good. Because I am strategy. When you were crying over what happened to you yesterday, you can look back over your today and now you can quote Psalm 100, uh, Psalms 119 71 it was good for me that I have been afflicted because if I didn't be afflicted I wouldn't even know your ways your staff so I just want to say thank you God thank you you didn't kill me but it was good for me that I was rejected it was good for me that they didn't let me in the clique it was good for me I didn't go to this school it was good for me I didn't move to that city it was good for for me because you got a strategy for my life and God already has a plan and he says I am able to work it out through you now I don't know how you feel about yourself but God said, I'm going to work the plan out through you I didn't choose them I chose you Somebody got that. Somebody feel that. No, you wasn't the best qualified, and you was not the smartest, and you was not the best looking. Oh, but God, I chose you, and I'm going to show you how powerful I am through you. And while others are leaning on their gifts and talents, you are leaning on the word of God. You're leaning on Elohim. You don't even know how to do it. You don't even know what to do it, but I chose you. He did not create any living thing without the seed inside of itself. Now, now, we know why the enemy fight us so hard. It's not over what, amen, you are now, but it's over what's inside of you. He want the fruit of, oh my God. He want the fruit of your womb. He want the fruit of your loins. So he's going to work... That's just as hard to take them out before they can even get themselves started. And some of you, amen, you just sidestep the devil, amen, like he was roller skating down through life. And every time the enemy wanted to get you, he couldn't get you. Sickness couldn't get you. I'm going to help somebody. Amen. Car wreck couldn't kill you. Oh, my God. Things that could happen didn't, didn't get you. Hey, though it was formed against me. It did not prosper. And I want to say thank you, Lord. Oh, it did not prosper. The enemy tried to move me out, take me out, but he couldn't get his hands on me. He couldn't get his claws on me. He tried, but he, he couldn't get me. And every time he reached, God moved me out of the side because I'm chosen. I'm set apart. I'm sanctified. Mm. Ooh, I feel this thing. You need to understand the enemy is terrified of you. I don't know why you're so terrified of him. He's terrified of you. He said every time he see you, he see the blood. He said, my God, I can't even touch them. They got more power than they even thought they had. They can just say a thing and it shall come to pass. I am terrified of them. The enemy is terrified of people that are sanctified. He will set traps and obstacles and bondages to keep you from entering into your purpose because he's terrified of you. Don't waste your time being terrified of him. He's terrified of you. Walk like you got, amen, kingship behind you. Walk like you own it all. Walk like I'm the king and I'm the queen of this whole estate. When you walk into a room, don't walk with your head down. I own all of this. I don't got to say it. I don't got to proclaim it. I just know it's mine. The greater the struggle you face, the greatest the challenge you go through, 
the greater the turmoil in your life is indication that Satan has assigned assassins to terminate you from reaching your destinated target. So if you are, I mean, always, always uh, attacked on this level, body, soul, or spirit, it just, it just lets you know that the enemy, amen, is assigned to take you out because there's something great that God has for you to do. It is not for you to bellyache. It is not for you to cry all night long. It's just to let you know you are marked. You are set apart. You have been sanctified and that you are chosen. And I'm going to use you in a great way in the last harvest, in the last days, when everybody has fallen out about what the government is doing and what the economy may say. You're going to stand tall because I mark you. See, God does his best work in calamity. You don't hear me. He does his best work when, 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 when the world, they done got their God. And they're trusting in their horses, and they're trusting in their chariots, but God say, trust in me. And, and when he got a people that will trust in him, now he's going to do big things. But understand, he's going to do big things in trouble. Now stay with me. Okay, I just want to pause right here. Because a lot of you, because we live in a society we live in, where if things are going good, it's God. And if things going bad, it's the devil. And because we got an ideology, every time something challenging comes, we try and rebuke it. But you can't rebuke God. God said, I have assigned you to go down this trail, <laughs> this path right here. Now, no, no, yeah, it's got lions, tigers, and bears all around here, but I have assigned you. Now, you're going to know my strength because when they jump out on you, you're going to be able to take them out. That's how you know I'm God. See, 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 see the reckless won't take that path because they want everything smooth. But what I got for you, your debt freeness is down this path right here. Your healing is down, down this path right here. Your financial break is down this path right here. And for those that don't take the path, don't get it. Everybody want to take the easy route. Everybody want to take what's, what's normal. No, I got to get on outside the boat. I got to jump in the water not knowing how cold it is. I got to jump in the water not knowing how deep it is. I'm going to trust in you, Lord. It doesn't matter how cold it is. It doesn't matter how deep it is. I'm going to trust you because when I get in, I know I can do what you call me to do. Oh. The enemy will do anything to overwhelm you. He, be, he will do anything to belittle you, to rip the confidence out of you. He doesn't mind how much you shout and how much you dance as long as you don't have confidence when you go home. Shout, dance, run. Throw coins in the air. Do what you want to do. As long as you go home, you have no confidence. It doesn't mind how excited you get. As long as you get through being excited, you have no character. Ooh. He wants you to just go through the motions of life, just having a form of godliness, but denying the power of. Go have your church service. Go do what you do, but, but, but there ain't going to be no deliverance in there. There ain't going to be nobody getting saved in there. This is going to be a form of God. And we love a form of godliness. Amen. As long as it looks godly, we think God is in it. As long as we got the papistry and the collars and the chains and all of the robes and the capes and the crosses, you don't hear me, and the communion table sitting right there. Amen. We love a form of godliness because it makes us feel holy. But God said, I can do that. I can do what I want to do with all any of that. Amen. You can come in with sandals. Amen with your toes not pedicured and I'm still going to do what I'm going to do. I am God by myself. I don't need anything you can bring. Amen. Mm. Oh, he... He doesn't mind how many days you live as long as the days you live, you ain't living. Uh, live days, go be 101, as long as 101 been hell. Somebody say, I'm going to live. I'm changing the game right now, I'm going to live. I'm going to start saving up all that money for somebody else to get. I'm going to spend me some money. I'm going to go out there and buy me something for me. It's Mother's Day. You don't hear me. I've been saving for them and been saving for them. And, saving, and now it's my time. 
Oh, I, I, I struck a chord right there because somebody's been waiting for a confirmation to spend that money. <laughs> you got to tell me one time, Jesse, that's it. One time, I'm out there, let's do it. You need to understand why the enemy is after you. He wants to rob you and abuse you and rape you. A matter of fact, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to sabotage your success because you were created to win. Somebody said, I was created to win. Uh, you were called to win. You were set aside to win. When you was formed, he said, you're going to be winning because you're chosen. Time out for struggling, amen, all of your life. Amen, just to get a gold watch and get a rocking chair and sit on the front porch while the track is going by and while the dog is chasing the cat. Time out for that kind of mess. I was created to win. I was set apart to win. And I'm going to do it on the highest level possible. Do I got anybody say, I want to be in that group right there? On the highest level. When the world think about balling, they think about me. They think about you. I ain't got a whole lot of help on that one. Because every time the church start talking about balling, amen, the religious people get scared. Because the religious people like you to be in hell on fire and brimstone mode. But God said, so you over that right there. You already going to win. I done told you at the end of the book you're going to heaven. I already told you what you sank, oh, when you said my name. And, okay, I need somebody. When you accepted me, you already won. What are you tripping on? It is an attack of the devil to, to live your days just living, but not living. As if you're going to live forever. When are you going to stop and say, it's my time? Okay, I'm in the wrong church. I know I'm in the wrong church. God needs somebody, it's my time. If I done struggled like that, I've been attacked like that, and I didn't fall, and I didn't crumble, Lord, no, it must be my time. I'm going to speak to my body and say, body, it's time to be held accountable to healing. I've been quoting, I've been declaring, it's got to be my season for healing. I rebuke you, Satan. Sometimes you got to look at your feet. And, and touch your knees. And sometimes you got that amen, just touch the body part that, that keeps screaming and say, say, now I hear you talking. I hear you talking, but you better start walking. You better get on out of here because that's not my lot. I am created to win. I've been set aside to win. Somebody, I'm chosen, I'm chosen. Oh, God set you apart to be successful. He sets you apart to be a vessel of honor that you might be meat for the master's use. You were not meant to fail. You was not meant to quit. You was not meant to collapse. You were not meant to lose control. You were not meant, amen, for failure. You was not meant for, to be destitute. You was not meant, I'm gonna stop right here, to be lonely. I want y'all to stop saying I'm lonely. No, you just alone. Oh, you, you, I'm just alone for a season. You are not lonely because once the devil know you're lonely, he'll send anything. I said he'll send anything that got two legs. Oh, I need to help somebody. You are not lonely. I'm just alone. I'm tired of these singles. Somehow. You always talking to some for the couple. What about us? Live clean. Just live clean and watch and see how, what God will do. I just gave you one director, live clean. <laughs> uh, yeah, you talking about couples. Well, couples got more challenges. Couples, couples got more things. They, okay. It's not just one now. It's two. Man, I don't think they with me. I don't think they're with me. Because see, they keep looking at you got somebody, but the somebody I got may not be, hey, man, my first choice. Can I go here? Uh, can I do a bug bunny just uh, trap on over here? Yeah, yeah. You know I'm telling the truth. Uh, they don't know it, but that was number two the whole time. <laughs> you know they were number two. But you loving number two like number one. 
Let me get on back on my role. You were not created to be lonely. You were not created to have a stress attack. You were not created to have headaches. I need to talk to somebody right there because you are popping pills like nobody's business. Amen, God, so you was not created to have no headaches. So right now, put your hand on your head and say, headaches, you don't live here no more. You got no access here no more. I was not meant to have headaches every other day. You were not meant to have a nervous breakdown. You was not meant to have cancer. You was not meant to have hypertension. You was not meant to have diabetes. That is a attack of the devil. You are meant to win. Ah. You were meant to be the head and not the tail. You were meant to be above and not beneath. You were meant to be a conqueror, but more than a conqueror. You were meant, amen, to lend money, but not borrow money. Somebody need to receive that. I'm called to lend it, but I ain't going to be borrowing. That means to lend it, I got to have it. So somebody say, Lord, I'm going to give you my routing number to my checking account, and here is my checking account number. Send it right there, Lord, because I was meant to give it, not borrow. Somebody say, I'm chosen. I'm chosen. I'm chosen. I just come here today just to encourage you here. Amen. You are chosen. Now I'm in my text. That was all introduction. It was all calamari and oysters. Now, let's get to the meal. Woo, let the waiter bring out them in the rib eyes. Hey, you know. Our text says, you have been chosen. But I have chosen, you know, you have, not, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. I ordain you that you should go forth, get this, and bring forth fruit. I did not choose you to be broke. I did not choose you to not have fruit. When I chose you, I know you're supposed to have fruit. And then he says that your fruit should remain. In other words, it's supposed to be a cycle. You give, you buy, you make more money, and you give, you buy. Your fruit shall remain. I, I'm not in the business of blessing you one time, and that's it. When I say I'm going to bless you, I'm going to do it on a cycle. You should bring forth fruit, and your fruit shall remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. So what he's saying is, because you are fruitful, yeah. I'll put it in corporate terms, because you know how to manage what you have thus far. Quit saying, when I get that, I'm going to do this. No, you're not. If you ain't doing it now, you're not going to do it then. Let me tell you, you can easily give to something being broke than having a lot. You can get that because I got too many broke people in here that don't understand. Streaming family, maybe I'm talking to you. It's easier to give when you're broke than when you have a lot. So if you're not giving the little two coins you got now, don't talk about, Lord, when I get four million, I'm going to give you uh, a million. Quit lying. Quit lying. You're not going to do that because you're not doing it now. He says, I need to see how you manage what I have given you now. If I gave you that job, then the money you make on that job, manage that. And when I see you managing that on a continual cycle, then whatever you say, I'm going to give it to you because I have found you worthy of management. Yeah. Ooh. I got a Honda Civic, Lord. Jesus. But I want, I want a Royce. That's my dream car, Lord. I want to run. I'm praying for that Rolls Royce. And I got a Honda Civic right now. And every time you go to the, to the Honda Civic and, and you turn the car on, it, it's a light always on. And it's been on two years. And, and you still ain't taking it to the shop. You don't hear what I'm talking about. And, and you got three ball tires. No wonder you're skidding all over the road when it rains. And, and you, got, you got McDonald boxes stuck 
in the back crevice of the car and you got cheese fries all on the, you don't hear what I'm talking about. And you got all this stuff all out of order. But you're praying for more. And he said, I cannot give you more because you can't manage what you got right now. Like, yeah, any mothers got any teenage kids in here? Can you just raise your hand? You got any teenage kids, okay? Okay, that's all we got in here. That's all the mothers got teenage kids. We got a young church. We got a young church or old church? I don't know. Young church, okay. Now, when your teenage child or young child asks you for something of, of consequence, I'm talking about big stuff, you look at them like this. You can't even make your bed up. Let me talk to this side right here. Let me help somebody get on the Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you don't even put the toilet paper on the roll. Am I talking right? Uh, baby, when the milk is out, you just leave the carton in the refrigerator. And now you asking for a new car. Are you out of your mind? You, you, you ain't worthy of it yet. You, you, don't, you don't manage well yet. It'd be foolish for me to give you something that you cannot manage on the level you're managing. Well, God does the same thing. He said, I've been looking at your statement. I've been looking that you are bouncing checks like nobody's business. <laughs> I'm trying to encourage, but stay with me, okay? Oh, every time a bill come, you just got to wait until it's three weeks late to pay it. I don't know why you won't pay it on time, and I know I'm talking this section right here. No bill paying section right here. And now, and now, you want God to bless you, and you don't pay bills on time. How do you think God going to bless something that has no management skill? And you get mad at somebody that's balling because they are managing. He says, I expect your fruit to remain. Now, if I can see the fruit remain, hear what he says. Ask whatever you want from me and I'll give it. Maybe that's the reason why you're not experienced breakthroughs in your prayers it's not that he don't want you to have it he has not found you faithful in management quit saying I, I want to leave this wife give me another wife quit saying I'm, I'm going to leave this husband give me another husband Girl, let me tell you something the grass is not greener uh, I ain't even finished the sentence. But I said that to see who was going to stand, who wasn't going to stand. Because I'm coming for you right now. For all of you are looking for another husband, another wife out there, God says, hey, the reason why you can't keep them because you're not managing them. Then I couldn't talk past her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when I gave it to you, I expected you to bring her up. I didn't expect for her to go down. Her hair's supposed to be done. I, do I got any witnesses in here? Her toes were supposed to be I got, I got some low-thinking women over here. Y'all should be standing up, because I want my hair done, thinking they're done, toes done. I want my tonsils fixed. Whatever can be fixed, I want it fixed. So God said, when I gave you the woman, when I come back for the woman, I need to see have you brought her up? Because when I come back and see she's struggling, having stress attacks, hair falling out because she's worried about your... Mm -hmm. How can I bless your home? <laughs> when you can't take care of the one I gave you. Because you were so excited to get her. What happened? For all you women that used to cook for your man. Yeah. Now you ain't cooking for him. Oh, and God said, I see it. No, let me say, I see the lack of. I don't see no steak and eggs on the table. I'm trying to help somebody that your fruit remain. Why is my fruit not remaining? God, I'm, 
Lord, I'm trying to get off this. I really am. I, I, I want to go, but I'm stuck right here. Because you think the reason why you're not obtaining, because the devil done got in, and he's wrecking everything. And God says, no, I allow him to get in so you can see the reason why you're not blessed on that level. This is good teaching. Because once I know the why, I'm pretty good. I ain't got to know the inner destination come out, but just, you know, as long as I know the why, I'm okay. Why? You know, I want to know why my feet hurt. I say, Sam, I don't know why my feet is hurting. Okay, because everything looks nice. What's the problem? Oh, they had too much of dessert. That's what's the problem. <laughs> okay, I found out the answer. Let me go home. I'm just trying to give my wife some accolades right now. That's all. Just trying to let her see she's helping me. Sister Ocean, I'm trying to give her, she, she helps me. Because I can get off, I can get off the plantation real quick. I'm telling you right now. Uh, I can get off real quick. I can, and I, I'm not supposed to eat desserts every single day. I, I know that. But sometimes, amen, the sweet, I got a sweet too. Sometimes the sweet too, call your name. Now, I ain't tell nobody, so I'm going to tell them myself. I said, I said, L, go on down to college C's right now. It's about 9.30. I said, go on down to college C's right now. I said, get with Mother White, because I need for you to pick up something that she got. But while you're there, I need some of that seven-layer chocolate cake. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Because I need some dessert when I get home. That's what I need. Now, I know I'm not supposed to have it, but guess what? It's Mother's Day. Look at somebody say you chosen. I'm going to get back to the time. You are chosen. Anybody chosen? Somebody, why should be fixing a meal today? Oh, you're going out? <laughs> oh, it's Mother's Day. She's off today. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay. Have a seat. Mm. Wow, then I want to go further. Okay, let me read that. Get back on task. You have not chosen me. I chose you. I did not choose you because you was living clean or you was reading your Bible because you were doing something good for your mama or your sister. I chose you before you was born. And I ordained you that you're going to bring forth fruit and your fruit shall remain. That whatsoever you ask in the Father's name, he may give it to you. So God says, I put it in your mind to get saved. You did not get saved on your own. I already set the appointed time when you was going to get saved. I set the conditions so you would get saved. Oh, I gave you a desire to change. I gave you the power to change your life. I gave you the gift of conviction. I opened the door of repentance. I gave you the grace to change. I put you around the right people to influence you. I gave you an ear to hear, amen, what the Spirit is saying to you right now. Oh, I have chosen you. So you are not an accident. You're not a mistake. You were meant to be here. I got a purpose for your life. So you are chosen. Now you are chosen from the crown of your head down to the sole of your feet. Matthew 24, uh, 22, uh, 14 says, many are called. But few are chosen. I can tell you I'm chosen. Because when I heard the call, I had to answer what other people ignored. Mm. Oh, you'll hear me. When I heard the call in the city park, not no church. Not where everybody's dressed nice, playing organs, and everything is nice and conducive, amen, for somebody to walk down the aisle to get saved. No, I'm in a, I'm in a park. But when I heard the call, other people heard the call just like me. But when I heard the call, Jesse, I got up 
and responded to the call. That's how I know I'm chosen. Everybody else heard the sermon. But when the altar call was given, I got up, went to the altar, answered the call, and while the other people remained seated, that's how I know I'm chosen. The text goes on to say this right here. I have chosen you to be fruitful. You're called to be blessed. Where did this broke stuff come from? Where did I enter into the house of God? Why did I give you a license to remain in a struggle? Well, Jesus was poor. Lie. You only repeating what you heard. Jesus was not poor. If he was so poor, why did he have on a robe that they wanted to gamble for when he was at the cross? They say, now this man, and the Bible now is very specific. He had a robe that was seamless. Now, all the common people had stitches all on the side and on the front. He had a seamless, and, and they said, we'd rather tear it apart and just have a piece of it. No, he didn't call you to struggle. He called you to come on up. Be of the good life. You are called to be fruitful. Not hopeful. Not idealistic, not a liar, not a trickster, not a con artist. You are chosen to be productive. A matter of fact, you are forbidden to be unprofitable. Hmm. I chose you to have more. You're supposed to live in the best house. Okay. You're supposed to be eating at the finest restaurant. You're supposed to be traveling and willing than everybody else. You are a child of the king. Have you ever seen the king's shit? Fly economy? Just ask me, help me out. I had help my good friend Antoine over there because he loved economy. When I first met him, I'm like, man, you got to be out of your mind. I ain't going to no back cramped up, knees cramped up. By the time we got out of Raleigh, I can't even move, man. I saw him halfway. He said, my legs is numb. They ought to be. And I went back to the first class. <laughs> we are supposed to have the fruit of the earth. He said, all of it belongs to me. I own the cattle. I own the gold in the hill. Ask of me and I will give. Mm. You are chosen to have something left over after the transaction is over. No, I didn't take all my money. That was just. See, this is why Rod North is blessed financially. You see, we don't take no offers, none of that kind of stuff. Do, do, do. You see that? So that y'all gets good when it's, when it's time to give. But we, but we do good because we're taught. We're taught. And, and now it's your responsibility to, to respond to the teaching. I have done my part. I have taught you. Now I've got to step away and let you grow up and be the, uh, be the child or the adult you're supposed to be and do what's right. And those that have responded to the call has called Raleigh North to operate in the millions. Yeah. Why? Because the leader operate. And, oh my God. And you can't go higher than the leader. So as the leader goes, the church goes. So if the leader is dead free, you're supposed to be dead free. If the leader is a millionaire, you're supposed to be a millionaire. If the leader is healed, you're supposed to be the leader. It's called the law of reciprocation. So for you that's not there, can I just speak over your life? In 2024, you will be there. I didn't say you're going, no, you will. But see, this is how the word works. You got to receive it. Who received it? Uh, I got too many broke people, minded people in here. Did you receive that? Because see, here's a sign of somebody successful. They want to teach somebody else how to be successful. They don't want it for themselves. They know I got to teach you how to be successful. Look at somebody say, I'm chosen, I'm chosen, I'm chosen. Man, I got a little bit more. Mm. 
See, the devil wants to sabotage your success because you was created to win. You were set aside to win. You was formed to win. That's why God keeps telling us no weapon formed against you shall prosper so that you don't get caught up on the weapon. Don't get caught up on the weapon. It will be pointed at you, but it's going to be a misfire. It won't prosper. And every time the devil comes for your body, for your mind, for your children, for your marriage, for your job, amen, he said, misfire, they can't get you. I got a hedge of protection around you like Job. Nothing can infiltrate that protection. Why? Because you was called to win. You are on a mission. You have a designated purpose. You are, you are a marked son. You are a marked daughter. That's why the car wreck didn't kill you. That's why the cancer couldn't destroy you. I want to talk to somebody you have been diagnosed with cancer, and I want to help you right now. I want to help you right now. Don't you fret. Don't you give up. Don't you give in to the word. Let me tell you, this is a house where I help healing now. Don't you miss your healing. Don't you, if you are streaming right now, put your hands on that screen. Don't you miss your healing. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what the report said. I don't care what the negatives and the images said. You are already healed. You got to receive that. What am I trying to say? It's not based on what I'm feeling. Oh, I know what I'm feeling right now, but it's false. That's false right there. It's tr the enemy's trying to sabotage me. He don't want me to win. Ugh. I said this before, let me say it again. You are not lonely. He wants you to be lonely. He wants you to grab anything uh, to edify your loneliness. But how many know anything can't suffice? Uh, I ain't got no help in here, but... Uh, see, you want flesh when you should be calling the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm a man, and you're a woman, and we, we all know that, that that's part, you know, of life, but, 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 but somebody got to be self-disciplined here. First lady, I, I, we need to go on and celebrate Mother's Day because they, they done faded off, they done faded away. They don't fade it on me now. Hey, they, got, they got some appointment about one o'clock. They're trying to get up out of here. I'm going to give you this a little bit. Maybe I do the next part next week. But God is pulling you through tests and trials because you're chosen to win. You thought you couldn't take another thing going wrong in your life, but God is pulling you through tests and trials. God is monitoring, matter of fact, your tests and your trials so you won't quit. You thought you would just as well give up and die, but God is pulling you through because you're chosen. You can't quit. I know you feel like quitting, but you can't quit. Every time you feel like quitting, something comes along, reminds you, amen, you have invested too much to quit. You have come this far to quit because destiny is locked in you and here's why I want to end I want you to think about Elijah he's plowing the Bible said in a field with 12 yokes of oxen plowing in a field of mediocrity just thinking in his mind I know I was created to do more than to farm this land uh, I can't figure out why am I still here? What am I doing right now? I can't figure out how to unlock my destiny. Father, help me. I'm stuck in my history. I, I'm fulfilling the prophecy of my parents' dream. This is not my dream. It's my parents' dream. I'm just waiting for something meaningful to happen in my life. And all of a sudden, Elijah, the prophet, walked past him and saw something in him. And it made him drop the plow. And the Bible says that he sacrificed the oxen, burnt up the plow for wood to burn the oxen, kissed his father and mother goodbye, and said, I have to follow this man. Stay with me now. I don't have a title. 
I don't have credentials. I don't have a salary. I don't have a big name, but I, I have to follow you so you can show me how to unlock what's inside of me. Then the prophet said to Elijah, you have asked a hard thing. You want me to show you what's locked down inside me. Now watch this. And the first thing you need to know, you can't get this level of glory easy. Okay, stay with me, okay? You, you see me. You see how I'm living. You, you see the authority that I carry, and you want that, but you can't get that easily. Do you know we are living in a generation where people want stuff easily? Things that took you 20, 30 years to get, things that took pain and agony to get, things that almost made you lose your mind, and then they want you to lay your hands on them for 30 seconds and bestow something on you that took you agonizing pain to get? No. If you want my glory, you have to walk with me for a while. Oh, that's, that's what he told Elijah. If you want me, you're going to walk with me. You're going to see what it takes to have what I have. You have to suffer with me. You're going to have to endure hardness with me. And if you still, amen, hanging around after, then I release my glory unto you. And when you are chosen, you cannot just pick the parts you want and then ignore the other parts that you don't like. Lord, I want to know your resurrection. But I don't want to know you in your suffering, though. I want to have the victory, but I don't want to go to war. I want to be a winner, but I don't want to get to any fights. I want to prevail over my enemies. But I want everybody to like me too. But the Bible says too much is given, much is required. And if you want to have the glory on that level, then you have to go through the suffering oh, and the agony to get it. So don't think you can just come into church and get that level of power without you going through what you got to go through to be called the person God called you to be. So the enemy tried to twist it and says, okay, God don't love you and God don't like you and that's why he's not, no. God said, you must go through Samaria. You got to go through this, but when you come through it, when you get to the other side, Everything you ever wanted, everything you ever desired, everything that you have prayed for, I'm going to release unto you. Why? Because now you're able to handle it. Now I see your management skill. Now you can ask anything of me and I will give it to you because I found you faithful. And God has deposited greatness down inside of you. So much will be required of you. If you can bow your heads with me right now, as we respect the Word of God, what do you do when God has chosen you to go through and bear something that other people can't even relate to? I can't even call nobody, Lord. Elijah had something on him that made Elijah leave the familiar from the unfamiliar. It's difficult to give up the familiar for the unfamiliar because we tend to cleave to what's familiar. And God is calling you out. Said, I chose you, I sanctify you, and I set you apart. And he says, you are mine. And because you're mine, I'm calling you to be that person today. So while you're here, under the sound of my voice, God is calling you. Now, you may have been in church a long time, but many are called, few are chosen. You heard the call, but you didn't respond. So today, as this man right here coming to the altar has made a decision 
I'm going to get some things right. I want to ask all of you out there, this is your moment. This is your moment. Do you want to get it right? Are they looking at me? Well, they're looking at me too. So guess what? They're both looking at both of us. So what I want you to do, get up out of your seat and come to this altar and say, Lord, I'm going to get this thing right tonight. I mean, today. I'm going to get my life right because you chose me. And I have been wasting my time. I've been wasting things and wasting energy and wasting all of this. And Lord, now it's my season because I'm chosen. You're chosen to be healed. I said, you're chosen to be healed. So ask of me what you will, and I'll give it to you. That's how simple that was. Ask. You ain't ask. You was intimidated. I'm not I hope you enjoyed the video, and I pray you are inspired to take your life to the next level. Now, I want to hear from you. Leave me a comment and let me know how this blessed you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you will never miss a video. I'll see you next time. God bless you.